I've been researching this off and on for 20 years now, and uh, really a lot in the last two years after I, um, I just realized how much things are changing in the last, you know, in, in terms of wireless technologies. And, and I too have kids, so, you know, that, that brings out the, the protective instincts a lot more than if it was just us, right? So, you want me to get started? Sure. Okay. Yeah, so, you know, we've heard that cell phones might cause an increased risk of, of cancer, right? There's been some reports of this. And there's also been reports that there, there isn't any link at all, that, that there's no increased risk of cancer. And, you know, this, uh, this causes, um, I think, a lot of confusion for many of us. We don't really know how to sort out the information. And I think for, for many of us, we, we tend to just tune out the details because we don't really have the expertise or the time to go through and, and to do the research. Well, you know, after, after looking into this now for several thousand hours, I can say that if you go underneath the superficial stories, which most of the media stories are just going to be real, real surface level stuff, the evidence is really quite clear. There's, there's no doubt at all that um, the type of radiation that's exposed, that, that's emitted from wireless technologies is harmful. We don't know how harmful yet. I think we're going to know really clearly in a, in a couple decades, but, but there's plenty of research to show that it is harmful. And we're starting to see uh, some of the evidence start to come in. Um, for a long time, the, um, the science organizations were telling us that there, that there wasn't any evidence, that brain cancer rates weren't increasing. Well, we have uh, some evidence from the last month that shows that they've doubled in the last 10 years. So this is, this is certainly con concerning to doctors uh, who are on the ground, who are, you know, uh, seeing, the, seeing the effects firsthand. Uh, in the last year or so, the World Health Organization reclassified uh, radio frequency radiation, which is a type of radiation that's emitted from all wireless devices, as a possible human carcinogen, right? So it's a class 2B carcinogen. This doesn't mean that it's absolutely known if it's carcinogen, but it's, it's now in the ranking. So it's now in the same category as DDT, exhaust fumes, and uh, such things as lead paint. This, this applies to all wireless devices. And certain members of the, of the panel who, who came up with this, uh, this classification have said that this does justify the, imp the implementation of the precautionary principle, meaning it's, it, it's a good idea to start taking preventative action. Just recently, too, the Italian Supreme Court uh, had a ruling on cell phones, and they have ruled now that cell phones can cause cancer. But, you know, in terms of the big picture, uh, this, is, this is the number of subscribers here in the U.S. It's now over 300 million of us that are using cell phones out of 330 million. So you're talking 90% of us are using cell phones. And I think worldwide, we're at six billion, so 80 percent of the of the whole world, and that's that's unprecedented if you think about it. Uh, in a matter of 20 years, there's never been that type of, of of penetration of a market of a device into the market. And you know, cell phones are selling as fast now as they ever have. Whenever the latest device is is, uh, is released, it seems like you know, people just gobble it up. They just, they're just herding towards the stores. In some cases, the supply can't even keep up. And, you know, there have been, you know, this is now integrated into our culture, for better or for worse. It's part of what we do. Um, we've gotten used to using this kind of technology, and, and it's, it's not going to be something that we'll easily let go of. Um, I mean, the matter of fact, we're, we're addicted to it. You know, if you go anywhere, you'll see people touching their phones, flipping their phones. It's, it's like, it's, 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 uh, it's all over. And some of us, you know, can't even remember time before using it. We don't, we don't know what it was like to not have the ability to always be checking our, our messages. <coughs> so as with most addictions, there's a certain amount of resistance to seeing, to seeing this and certainly to, to hearing this outside information. And for many of us, you know, we might just go on autopilot until the information uh, really 
really uh, gets to us. Now, with all types of environmental issues, there are certain places where the problems show up earlier. And for a certain subset of the population, um, myself included, uh, we have an issue called electrosensitivity, meaning we immediately feel the effects of certain types of radiation, of wireless radiation, and it causes us, um, it causes us pain. Um, for, for many of us, this starts with a burning sensation when using a cell phone, and then it gradually uh, gets worse. Doctors are starting to understand why this is and the biochemical processes that are taking place whenever somebody is, is experiencing pain. There's, there's a number of different uh, physical markers that take place. And they're seeing, they're seeing a, a, a rise, a rapid rise in the number of patients that are coming in with this. Here's some of the symptoms, uh, headaches, difficulty concentrating, uh, depression, uh, s difficulty sleeping. These are, these are some of the many issues that are, that are uh, reported. But you know, the thing is, most people would never think, oh, that might be causing, you know, being caused by my cell phone or by my, my Wi-Fi or something. That would probably be the last place they'd ever, they'd ever look. Now, scientists who are, are specializing in this are uh, seeing that there's, um, what's really concerning is they're seeing that this is increasing rapidly and that they're projecting that within a decade, half of us will be, will be having these types of symptoms. Now that curve corresponds uh, almost perfectly with the rapid rise in radiation levels in our environment. Uh, in the last 10 years or so, they've gone from, from very low levels to, um, to what are are, are just unprecedented levels. And if you think about, you know, our history, you know, we never were exposed to this type of radiation naturally. This doesn't come from the earth. It doesn't come from the atmosphere. It's, it's entirely man-made. So we've never had to deal with this uh, as communities before. We've never had this in our cities. We've had other issues, but not radiation. Uh, and even as recently as the 1970s, levels were really quite low. And that's because um, until recently, the only transmitters that were out there were you know, radio and television stations. And those, those antennas were usually placed somewhere far away. They were up on top of a mountain somewhere. But now we have what are essentially microwave transmitters that we hold next to our heads or next to our bodies. You know, we have cordless phones, Wi-Fi iPads, which, which actually put off a lot of radiation, you know, computers and Bluetooth, baby monitors, and now uh, smart meters. So the idea is basically, if it is a wireless device and it's transmitting information through the air, it's, it's transmitting microwave radiation. That's just how it works. So this is an electromagnetic spectrum. There's a lot of different frequencies out there in the world. The Earth over here on the far left, it has a, it has a frequency. So it has a number of cycles per second, and it's around nine cycles per second. AC power, which is you know, electricity in your house, has a cycle of around 60 cycles per second, 60 hertz. And as you move up through these different type of technologies, uh, radio stations, TV stations, and then into cell phones, cell phones have a much higher frequency. So their frequency is around 900 million cycles per second. Okay, So that's a lot different than what it would have been uh, naturally. So this is a microwave oven. Uh, its frequency is uh, 2.45 gigahertz, which means 2.45 billion cycles per second. Right? That is the exact same frequency as Wi-Fi. Not the same intensity, thankfully, but it's, a, it's like a low-level microwave oven. Now, our bodies, you know, as I said, naturally, we're, we're at a much lower level. You know, we're, we are a bioelectric organism. Our brains, our hearts, our whole, all, all our parts of our body have bioelectric components. And if you take a look at, like, the brain, you know, at our most active state, when we're most busy thinking, our brains are at around 30 cycles per second. Whereas when we're completely relaxed in a deep sleep, we're down to one cycle per second. 
So this is a lot different than what is being imposed upon us now by these different types of invisible waves. You know, if somebody wants to check your heart, how do they do it? Well, they do it by checking it electrically. You know, EEGs, EKGs. And all of our different neural connections are all made up of electronic impulses. So what happens? What happens whenever you put billions of cycles into, into a being that's at something much slower? So what, what about the research? What about the evidence? Is there, is there really anything there? Well, I've been shocked, and I, and I recommend anybody who wants to learn about this just go to the research, and I can give you the, the, the sources to do that. Uh, uh, powerwatch.org.uk is probably the best website to look at for this. They make the research just accessible, which most people, they don't know how to do this otherwise. But what you find is that there are literally thousands and thousands and thousands of peer-reviewed public, uh, published research from around the world. Such, such issues as uh, uh, genetic damage, uh, increased risk of cancer, uh, cardiovascular problems, infertility, uh, leakage of the blood-brain barrier and damage to the brain. This is something I looked into a little bit. Here's, here's an image of a rat brain. They can't do these, this research on people, but this is a rat brain. And then this is a rat brain after two hours of low-level radiation. And you can see the damage. You can see uh, the leakage of, of, uh, of the, the barrier, and you can see some cell death. So what happens after 20 years of this? It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a problem. We've also got issues uh, with the thyroid, melatonin, which can cause sleep problems. This, this, this is why a lot of people are, who live around cell phone towers have sleep issues. Um, behavioral problems, cognitive issues, and uh, you know, again, we have studies from around the world, not just, not just human studies, but we're also now having animal studies as well. There's, there's evidence that the honeybees, one of the problems they may be having is related to the rapid proliferation of, of radiation, wireless radiation. And if you, you know, if you even go so far, you can go back into the archives and you can find research from decades ago showing thousands and thousands of studies from you know, as far back as the 20s. So it's not that we have a lack of research. That's not the problem at all. Uh, now, some of the, the most concerning areas to look at are the effects on children because, uh, for example, this was a high-quality study, independent study from Scandinavia that found that if somebody started using a cell phone before the age of 20, that's when you really started to see the effects. The increased risk of cancer was over 500%. This was a, a, a study that was done on pre- and postnatal um, exposure to cell phones, and they found that uh, if somebody was exposed to cell phones before the age of seven, there was an increased risk of behavioral problems and hyperactivity. And it's something that we're seeing a lot of these days, uh, ADHD. This was a study from, from Yale. Now, the reason for that is uh, that the children are more susceptible, more vulnerable. One of the reasons is that they have a higher water content, so they're more... Uh, conductive of the radiation. So, if, for example, if you want to stick something in the microwave oven and it's dry, like you try to put dry rice in there, it doesn't cook, right? Nothing happens. Whereas if you add water to it, uh, there's a resonant effect that happens. Uh, so children's skulls are also thinner. There's a much deeper penetration. Uh, immune systems are still undeveloped. And the cells are, are rapidly dividing. So if you have genetic damage that happens at a, a young age, for example, double-strand DNA damage, which has been reported, um, you know, it's sort of a snowball effect as to what could happen as things went on. Obviously, this industry is making a ton of money. I mean, we're talking, it's probably at this point one of the most powerful industries there is. I know that they have more lobbying power than, you know, big pharmaceuticals. So they have the ability to influence not only the politics, but the research. So if you look at, uh, for example, studies that were uh, industry funded, most of them will not find an effect. Whereas if you look at independently funded studies, most of them will find an effect. And this is the same thing that happened before with tobacco. We've, we've heard it before with other issues. And uh, it's happening here again. Now, the EPA, they don't look into wireless issues or wireless health issues at all. The FDA has, has, doesn't either. So this leaves us with one agency, which is the FCC. 
Now, the FCC is not a health agency. It never has been. Their regulations, their, their guidelines, are based on what are called thermal effects, meaning how much radiation does it take to start to heat your body? That's the only thing they look at. They don't look at any of the effects underneath. So here's a, here's a set of studies. This is around 60 or so studies that are well underneath FCC. If you look on the right, you can see that this is percentage of FCC. You know, we're looking at levels that are up to 100,000 times lower than what the FCC says is, is safe for you. This is a, a, an example study. This was, this was something on cell towers. Cell tower research is, is really quite relevant because it's looking at radiation levels, not, not high levels that you hold to next to your head for short periods of time, but more like cons consistent, long-term, low-level radiation. And what they found in this particular study was that if you live closer to a cell tower, meaning less than a couple hundred meters, you had a dramatically uh, increased risk for certain types of cancers, particularly breast and brain cancer. And that uh, patients developed uh, breast cancer at a much younger, younger age, up to 20 years less younger than, than they would otherwise. Here's another study from Israel. They found that females were mo more at risk. Again, this may be due to higher water content. It may be due to other more complicated uh, hormon hormonal issues as well, but women are much more susceptible. And they, said they found that seven out of eight cancer case cases were, were women. And this was similar to another study that, that found the same case with girls. So we're certainly, we are seeing uh, increased risks of, uh, of breast cancer. Now, some of this may have obviously might be due to other things. We don't know how much of it might be due to this, but the, the problems are, are here. This is, this is a, one of my favorite quotes. This was by a senior research scientist for Kaiser Permanente. He is a, this is a, a major healthcare organization from out west. It's probably one of the largest insurance companies, insurance, insurance organizations there is. And he said the bottom line is that the safety level for RF exposure related to non-thermal effect is unknown at present. And whoever claims that their device is safe regarding non-thermal effects is either ignorant or is misleading. It's that simple. There's no way it's safe, not with this much research. So this brings us to one of the more recent newcomers to, to in terms of wireless devices, which is uh, smart meters. Wireless smart meters are uh, supposed to be energy efficient. That's, they're supposed to help us with saving electricity. Well, independent audits by um, even the Attorney General of Connecticut found that smart meters do not save energy. There was no beneficial impact whatsoever found. It was an expensive uh, proposal that they decided to not go ahead with. But on the other hand, there have been thousands of complaints around the country of health issues, all of which, of course, get discounted by the utilities who say it's, it's all in these people's heads. But when you have doctors reporting it and you have people from, you know, from California to, to Vermont, it's, it's, it's pretty hard to ignore. It's pretty hard to de deny. And these are people who were perfectly healthy before smart meters went in, and then suddenly their health went down downhill and they you know they didn't have the ability to opt out here in Vermont we can opt out simply by filling out the forms but a lot of them had to had to fight a lot of them were may have even been uh, forced to leave their homes so uh, this is a chart of the radiation levels from smart meters with some of those uh, peer-reviewed studies and the, and the effects that were found in those studies overlaid at 10 feet away from a smart meter this is the same, level, the same uh, level of radiation as where they found double-strand DNA breaks. 30 feet away is where there were can was cancer. So, you know, you don't really want to stand too close to it for too long. So, what happens when you have multiple smart meters? You have a bank of smart meters. And that's an issue that we're seeing here in Vermont. We have a number of cases where, you know, somebody opted out, but the rest of the people in the, in the complex or the rest of the people in the organization didn't want to. Um, what do we do? And there's, so far, we don't have a solution for it. But if you think about it, each one of these smart meters emits radiation, a pulse every 10 seconds or so. So every day, 
this this particular situation would would emit you know 70,000 pulses or so a day so what's the solution well there's a lot of environmental problems out there now you know we've got more than you could ever even deal with in a lifetime but per, you know fortunately this is something that we can do something about it's as simple as taking a look at where you have wireless devices and either choosing to go hardwired which you know you, you, you still can get phones that have cords uh, and they still work fine they, they worked for us for a long period of time uh, you either you either go wired or you use your wireless less you just try to make a, a conscious decision about how you use it you know you can plug your computers in a lot of places at least at home uh, and you can still you know you can keep your own analog meter which again has worked fine for for decades uh, now if you if you want to continue to use your cell phone if you have to use it there's a device called an air tube headset it's like a wired earpiece except the last part of it the last foot or so is sort of like a stethoscope so there's no actual electri electricity going through it it's just uh, it's just through through sound th through a conduction of sound so there's no radiation that will be next to your brain you can keep the cell phone off to a side and it's 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 uh, much much less radiation so um, so that's it for my presentation if you have any questions feel free to ask yeah go ahead um, <clears throat> this last one here if yeah. if that I mean, how long is that little cable that's separating the, where the signal's coming in from your head? That image makes it look pretty short. I think that they're uh, at least two or three feet long. So I think, you know, if, uh, if you had it on your seat next to you, you know, you could talk and it would, it would work quite well. You know? I mean, wouldn't that, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm just playing, kind of playing devil's advocate. Sure, here because, sure. You know, I don't know what side I'm on with this, but if, if two or three feet away, but that thing makes a big difference. Why wouldn't say 50 or 100 feet away from a meter? Yeah. Almost negate the issue. Well, what I'm saying is, if you need to use a cell phone for your work, you can you can take your levels from say 100,000 next to your head, and you could bring it down to 1,000 that your body's being exposed to, which is which is good. I mean, that's 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 going to help you uh, reduce your risk. Um, now, if you want to compare that to a smart meter, um, it's hard to compare because a smart meter is all throughout the day, and a cell phone, you know, it depends on how much you use them. But it's, it's, it's more about the, the idea of what can you do that's prudent to reduce your exposure. I mean, we can't completely eliminate this. It's everywhere, uh, it's especially in, in, in the cities and towns. But it doesn't mean we have to completely ignore it either. You know, what, what steps do you want to take? It's, it's, it's just up to you as an individual. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, is there any um, study that talks about the difference in the effect in relation to proximity? Well, what we can look at is we can look at the radiation levels, right? So each wireless device uh, gives off a certain amount of radiation. It gives off its own unique amount of radiation. We can measure that radiation. Um, I have a, a, a device that, that, you know, this is really what you have to have in order to know what you're dealing with. Otherwise, it's just you're, you're in the dark. And so this particular device measures the amount of radio frequency microwave radiation from something. And it really is an eye opener. So you can know what your levels are at home or at work uh, with your cell phone and so on. And then you can compare that if you really want to get into it. You can compare it to the research. So um, a number of slides back, you can see, for example, let's say a Wi-Fi laptop is 22,000. So that's, that's, those are the radiation levels that are like two or three feet away from a Wi-Fi laptop. You can see that those radiation levels are almost exactly the same as where they, you know, scientists found double-strand double DNA damage. Um, there was a study that came out last year that found in as little as four hours there was increased DNA fragmentation from using a, 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 a Wi-Fi laptop, right? And there was a decreased uh, reproductive you know, abilities as well. So, you know, you have to just sort of do your own research and see how much, how much of a risk you want to take, right? So, uh, so does that device have to be next to an, a device, or do you just simply put it, like, if you turn it on right now, what would it, what would it show? So, we all want to know now. <laughs> so right now, 
it's showing around 300. So if we look down here towards the bottom, that's, that's the same level as found anxiety and alarm in, in rabbits or behavioral disruption in, in mice and rats. This last tier of studies is, uh, was, were cell phone towers. So that's, that's the type of radiation levels that you would get maybe 300 meters away from a cell phone tower. Would that be stronger if you were holding it right up next to that Wi-Fi thing? Or was that yes. pretty, it would like a lot stronger? So yes. the proximity does make a difference. Absolutely. It's, it, it drops off really quickly with distance. Um, next to the router would be 60,000. So we'd be, up, we'd be up here at the top. Literally just that 20 feet? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and the, the strength of that little Wi-Fi router in comparison to the smart meters? A smart around the same, or a smart meter way more powerful of, of a signal being sent. I just measured smart meters last week, and I found that right next to them is a million. A million, as opposed to sixty thousand next to that router or so. Yeah. Right, and about thirty feet away from a smart meter was around two thousand. Wow. Okay, so, but then that gets into more nitty gritty details. You know, is a pulse every ten seconds as harmful as a cell tower? We don't know. It gets into a lot of unknowns and. So the, just yep. for point of clarification, the percentage on the right, of, it's the FCC's limits, right? The FCC guidelines are based on frequencies, so it's not, it's not the same across the board. So this, is, this particular chart is for you know, self, uh, cell phone towers and, and Wi-Fi and that kind of thing. Their level is 10 million, and uh, a Wi-Fi laptop is, say, 20,000. So you're at less than 1%. You're at much less than 1% of what the FCC says is okay. Uh, the, American, the American Academy of uh, Pediatrics just recently requested that the FCC look at their guidelines because they're like 30 years old. They haven't looked at any research in the last 30 years. They're completely at it. Obviously, it's, 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 it's helpful for the industry. They don't really have to worry about it. I mean, uh, but it's not protective for human health at all. You're really, you, that, that's, that's a really important thing to realize is that there's nothing here protecting you except yourself. Just out of curiosity, because you, know, you got the great old tool, um, yeah. is there a way to, to do a cell phone test to see what it actually, how sure. it spikes with the cell if phone? If you want to hold it up against it. Unfortunately, it's not my phone, so I'd, I'd love Drew if he's willing to do something to, to demonstrate. You know, just hold it right up against maybe but it. Right I mean, it's actually when you make the call that it's the, it's the highest, right? Because you're actually... Yeah, it's going to be hard to say... Someone call Drew. Yeah, I'm calling you, Drew. <laughs> okay. We do this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and it is. Best of best. Right. Is your phone right? But it's going to go up a lot. Here, let me point this answer towards. Answer better. Can you see that? I'm saying answer it. Oh, yeah. So it's 9,000 down to 6,000. Now, is it true, though, it's when you're making the call that's actually... From like 1,000 to 8,000, it's all over the place. Yeah, it's sort of hard because there's other variables. Yeah, now it's in the hundreds, 300, 100. Are you connected? Yeah. Did you actually call? You seem to be. Yeah, we're, okay. we're on the yeah. phone. Right. <laughs> cell phones, we're first... On the phone. Oh, I guess so. When, they, <laughs> when you first make a call with a cell phone, it sends out stronger radiation. Like, it's like yeah. has to reach the... And one of the sheets. Probably so. Then all cell phones are different too. Some of them emit a lot less radiation. Mm -hmm. The other thing is that whenever you're using a cell phone, if you're inside a car, it has to work harder because it has to go through the metal. Mm -hmm. So um, from what I understand, it can actually exceed FCC guidelines if you're, if you're in a car. And, and I guess one of the other things about cell phones, if you look at the fine print of the... Um, of the manuals, a lot of cell phones will tell you don't hold it up against your body, right? Like keep it an inch away. Most of us don't ever know that, but that's because you're actually exceeding FCC guidelines if you, if you have it up against your body. Thanks, Ray. Yeah, yeah. thank Great. you. Yeah. Thank you very much. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah.